All right, so today we're going to be working with Excel. Specifically, we're going to be reading in data that is stored in Excel files using C Sharp. All right, so I've created a new WinForms application here. I'm just going to grab a button and just drop a simple button here. And I'm going to say read and we're going to call it CMD button. Okay, we're going to double click the button. Here, we need to actually include a library. So I'm going to go to add reference. And then I'm going to come down here to COM and I'm going to choose Excel and you're going to grab this Microsoft Excel 16.0 object library. I'm pretty sure you have to have Office installed for this to work. So that's just kind of a thing to know. But anyways, all right. So once you've got that done, the next step is going to be actually declaring a new Excel book and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to put this inside of a different function. I'm going to call it a uh, read Excel. And I'm just going to make a function called that. So private void. So the way this works is you're kind of creating a new instance of Excel and telling Excel what to do. So from here, I'm going to cut out all of these gray items that aren't actually being used. And I'm going to say using Microsoft.office.interop.excel. So we can actually use this library that we included. And that comes with an application and you want this application object that is excel.application here. Um, and we're just gonna call it uh, excel equals new application. And then this just needs some quotes. Okay, um, this thing is mad at me, show potential fixes. So it wants this explicitly declared, but I wonder if I can do, so now that we've got the Excel application kind of declared as an object so that we can use it, we're going to create a new workbook and then we're going to create a new worksheet. And these are going to be read in. We're not creating these objects here. We're just creating variables to hold these objects here. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to open a workbook. So we're going to set our workbook WB equal to Excel dot workbooks. Um, workbooks.open and then this is going to take our file path. This line will open our workbook and store it in our WB or workbook variable. So then we're going to open the first sheet inside of that workbook. So this is to get that first worksheet and we're going to say worksheets and here I'm going to say zero just for the zero index. This may have to be a one Excel is kind of weird where it likes to start things at one instead of zero. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as zero. And if it turns out it needs to be a one, then we'll go from there. So I'm going to do WS dot cells and I'm going to do one colon one. And let's see, let's do a message box, message box dot show. It doesn't like this for some reason. What did I do? Ah, it's capital B. That was my mistake. And this is a capital S show. Okay, so message box dot show that. All right, so we're going to run it and we're going to see what happens. So we hit the read button and this actually aired. Sorry, we couldn't find it because I didn't set file path. Okay, so my actual file is called Excel test and it is located at C colon slash slash uh, simple slash slash excel test dot xlsx so i'm going to run it again and click read again and this time it doesn't like the index so i was pretty sure that was going to be the case what we need to do here is dot value so this gets us the cell as an object and we need to get the value from that cell so i'm going to run it again click read and now we get the value of apple. We're going to say um, we could create an object called cell and set that equal to our cell um, just to show that this ws.cells11, this gets the cell located at 11, which is actually the A1 cell. This is the first cell in the sheet. And then from there, I can, uh, we could do string cell value equals cell dot value. So as you can see here, 
we're getting the value from this cell. And this is actually a range. So cell here is, this gets you a worksheet range, and then I'm getting the value from that range and setting that into cell value. And I'm gonna drop the convert to string because I don't think we're actually gonna have to do that. Okay, so as you can see, this is a simplified broken down version, but it still pulls the value of Apple. I'm gonna change this from column one to column two and click read again. And now we're getting wine. And if we come back and look at our Excel sheet, this would be column two. So column one has apple, banana, grape. Column two has wine, beer, sugar. And this allows us to get that value. So something else I could do is I could change this from dot cells to range and pass it A1. And then if I run this and click read, we get the value that's in A1, so apple. And then I can say A2. And this should get us the value that's below apple which would be banana. And then obviously I could do B1 and you kind of see the trend here. You can just change the values and it makes it super easy to kind of understand what you're reading inside of the Excel document. Um, I could also do A1 colon A2. So I'm giving the range an actual like string representation of a range. And the result of that is gonna give me an error because C dot value is actually an array now. And I think I could do like dot two string. Let's see if that works. Um, it's probably just gonna tell me it's an array. Yeah, system.object. But now cell.value is an array of values. So I could say for each result as string in For each uh, string, sorry, this is the BB coming out of me. For each string result in cell.value, then show cell.value. And then what I'm gonna do here instead is, I'm just gonna message box result. So I'm just looping through the array and displaying result. So we get apple, we get banana. That's the trick to kind of looping through the data inside of the Excel sheet basically reading this range as an array. And if you're reading a lot of values out of an Excel sheet, you're gonna want to treat the results as an array. It's a lot faster than reading one cell and then reading another cell and reading another cell. You would rather read the range, put that into an array, and then once you have that array, iterate through the items inside of it. It's just much faster and it'll make your application that much better. But yeah, that's about it for now. Basically just read the file in using this new Excel object after you import the reference and open the workbook, open the worksheet, and then start pulling values out of that sheet. You can also put the sheet name here. That's just one other thing. But anyways, that's it for now. Um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.